I finally got my hands on this Creality 3D Printer multi-function enclosure. In this video, I'm going to show you not to make the same mistake that I did. This 3D Printer enclosure is from Creality themselves and this is the small size which is 48cm, 60cm and 72cm. And there's a marking here, do not use blade when you open up the box. So I'm using this Scotch 3M scissors which I can change it to a box cutter. And with that, safely cut off the cellophane tape and not damaging the items inside. So let's take all the items out and uh, there's a very clear instruction actually. Well, not clear enough. That shows you uh, all the parts and the things that you need to install. Bear in mind, there's also marking for the tubes. 1, 2 and 3 that coincides with the marking on this packaging. Number 1 is the medium length tubes, number 2 is the shortest one and number 3 of course is the longest one. Now let's just take them all out. I just put them in pairs so that I don't accidentally mix them up. And with that, let's unpack these connectors. So these are all three connectors. So just put them in. So basically the shortest end is the front and then the medium is on the sides. So let's build up the bottom frame and the top frame. They are both identical. And to install the top frame, actually you just need to flip them over and basically install all these four longest posts, which is labeled number three. And with that, you can put on the top frame and we will get a cube shaped, which is actually the frame for the enclosure itself. And after putting them on, you realize that it's not too bad. It's light and quite steady. The last piece of packaging to unpack is the enclosure itself. This is a thermal insulated uh, material and it is also claimed to be fire retardant and waterproof. So uh, I feel that the zip is kind of getting stuck is because of the folding. So this is the part where most people did it wrong and I did it wrong as well. So after installing the frame, if you try to push the enclosure in, it will be too tight for you to install it. So the best way is to remove the frame first, just have the bottom frame and then push all the four corners into the bottom part of the enclosure. Okay, just be mindful that the zip and the opening opens to the top. So the bottom part is the bottom part of the frame for this enclosure. And then we install in the four pillars. Lastly, we add back the top part of the frame. Make sure that it is securely pushed in into the four pillars. And every time you do that, just fold the enclosure over the top and make sure that it is tight. And it is actually snugly fit in. And of course, the last part is just to zip and to close the enclosure to check for any defects and to make sure that all corners are all in a very good rectangular and cube shape. Okay, looking good and very sturdy as well. So over here on the side, there's a pocket and there's also a hole for you to access in to change your filament or to work out some of the settings if you want to. If you notice the top part of the flap, there's also a piece of Velcro. The function is actually for you to hold the flap up when you open up the flap by sticking on like this. Then at least you don't have to have one hand to open the flap and the other hand to work on the things inside. All right. On the top is the same thing. You can open this up and also Velcro it this way and you can access your filaments and to work on the printer from the top. It has a big window in front so that you can check on your print and I love the steadiness and also the lightweightness. I'm thankful that it is made light because it made it very easy for me to position this and then later on to put the printer in. But firstly, I just want to make sure that the printer will be able to fit and the height as well. So if you have the original spool holder, actually it just managed to go inside with the Ender 3 V3. And uh, because I printed this filament guide, so I have no problem for it to fit in nicely and I can put my filament on the left side or on the right side of the printer. So let's now try to put the printer inside. These enclosures comes in three different sizes. This is the smallest one, which is perfect for all the Ender 3 series. So Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2 and Ender 3 V3. Well, gently insert the printer, but make sure that the top part with the spool holder or the filament guide goes in first and now you can place the printer inside. Make sure that the printer is placed right in the middle so that the tray will not hit the front part of the enclosure. And looks like there's enough space for me to even put in the dry box inside together with the enclosure. I'll like it this way because at least the heat 
and uh, the dryness is also helping the dry box. The side flap here proven to be helpful because I can just open up and replace the filaments from there. And uh, with the filaments guide, I can push it to the side and then reload it easily. I had some concerns with the clearance so I check it out. The Z-axis passed through clearly and it's safe. There's also a hole behind in the enclosure for us to put in the power cables. So this one is for the dry box and then the other one is for the printer. However, this enclosure is made generic for the ender trees. So the old ender tree, the power is on the right side and for the V tree, the power is on the left and I have to give it some space so that the power cable is not pressing on the enclosure which means that my dry box now doesn't have a space inside. You can do it this way but I don't quite like this solution as my filaments are exposed. I found out another solution is just to place a piece of the foam which you can get from your Ender 3 V3 box and with that the filament dry box can now sit behind and it has enough clearance for the bed as well. And with that, I think I'll like this solution better and I just need to reposition my filament guide and I'm ready to print. As the enclosure was folded in when they are packaging and shipping it, so the zip got stuck a little. I added a little bit of dry loop. This is the WD-40 PTFE dry loop and with that, the zip smoothly uh, moves along. You can also apply some candle wax as well. Well, a word of advice, do not move the enclosure with your printer inside as the bottom part is not supported and you might spoil the enclosure. And with that, I'm ready to print and it is working really well for ABS and polycarbonate prints. You can customize it with any type of accessories. I would recommend you to add a battery powered LED bar because then at least it's illuminated and you can see whatever that's printing inside. The front plastic window can be a bit fuzzy when it's new out of the box is because of the folding. But after a few hours of print, the heat from the printer and the bed itself will help to make it smoother. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. And for other videos, please check out our channel for Fix Hack DIY. Thank you.